What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right. So before I get into this video, uh, I want to say that I'm sorry I wasn't able to get any Patreon videos out today, but I definitely will get some out tomorrow, and I'll probably do at least six Patreon videos by Monday. Okay. And also, I want to thank Gary for your contribution to the channel. Much respect for showing love to this channel. I want to thank everybody that has shown love to this channel over the past week. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And anybody that want to show love, you can do so in the description box using the links via the Cash App or the PayPal if you choose to, if you're able to. And if you're able to sign up to the Patreon, if you're interested in it, there's a link there as well. Now, I want to get to um, the topic at hand, and that is that I saw some sad news that just stopped me in my tracks yesterday. And that is that Steve Bongo McMichaels, one of the greatest players in Chicago Bears history, and a WCW legend, I believe he's a WCW Hall of Famer, uh, was recently diagnosed with ALS. And he um, made it public about two weeks ago, I believe it is now. Uh, but I just now saw this. Um, Steve McMichaels, nicknamed Mongo, was part of the Chicago Bears' legendary defense in the 1980s. Um, he and Dan Hampton uh, formed a, a duo, a tandem, if you will, at defensive tackle. And they were stars on that defense along with Mike Singletary and uh, Dave Durison. And, uh, you know, very popular figure, very colorful figure in Chicago sports. And after his retirement, of course, he had his stint with WCW wrestling. Many of us who are a little bit younger remember him more for that stint than in his best years in the, in, uh, in, in the NFL. Um, I believe he holds the franchise record for consecutive games played with the Bears with 191. And uh, he is second in franchise history in sacks behind Mike Singletary with 92 and a half. Now, for, for what I've read, Dan Hampton's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I believe Dave Durison, the late Dave Durison, is the Hall of Famer. Mike Singletary is the Hall of Famer. Mongo McMichael, I think, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame just based on his numbers. Okay. Now, sometimes I think what happens in these situations is I read that there's so many Chicago Bears in the Hall of Fame that maybe sometimes they feel like, you know, you, you don't want to show too much uh, partiality to one franchise, but the numbers are numbers, and I think that he deserves to be in there. Um, but apparently, McMichaels began experiencing symptoms of ALS this past fall with tingling in his arm. Um, he's now to the point where he has paralysis in both arms. He's still able to walk, but he's, he, he's declining very fast. Um, some cases of ALS, the, the, prog the, pro the process is slower. The progress is slower. Um, you, you, you never know though. You never know. Look. Um, some people don't live that particularly long, um, but Stephen Hawkins had it for 55 years and he lived. Not to say he didn't have some serious challenges, but he lived for 55 years. Um, McMichaels has lost a lot of weight, uh, over 60 pounds. Um, I did read that Ric Flair visited him recently. And I believe that they're, they're raising some money for him to help in his care uh, for his family, you know, to care as his illness progresses. Um, I want to say this in conclusion, okay? Um, I think the NFL is wrong with not offering players guaranteed contracts. And the NFL <clears throat> needs to set up 
the same type of health insurance that these crooked politicians in Washington have for themselves. Um, because, you, look, you can't ignore the evidence anymore. Now, as we all know, the NFL tried to bury the evidence of CT. It exists. It, there seems to be also a disproportionate amount of NFL players who are developing ALS. Mongo has it now. Uh, I believe the Saints player, is it Steve Gleason? He's battled for, for a number of years. Um, and there are some other players, I can't think of their names right now, who have battled or have ALS. Um, that's why I don't really get mad at the NFL making their sport safer. But there need to be changes in these players as far as their care when they get older. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, the, the recent tragedy that happened in South Carolina where the young man unfortunately took five lives before uh, ending his own life. He was not in his right mind. He had most likely some type of brain injury, but he was only 32 years old. There's something going on with this sport and in sports in general. We see it uh, with, with, with a lot of these guys as they're getting older in wrestling. We're seeing it, you know, with Jimmy Fly Snooker, and he had dementia and probably CTE. Uh, Chris Jericho. Um, you know, the list goes on and on. As far as, you know, how these guys have all these brain injuries. We see it in boxing. Sugar Ray Robinson, he fell apart after 1975. This is an elegant, classy man. And within a span of like a two years, he had become completely dependent upon his wife and family for care. We saw with great Henry Armstrong, he fell apart toward the end of his career. You know, Muhammad Ali. You know, um, Tommy Hearns, even though he's functional, you, you can see the damage and toll the sport, the, the great sport has taken upon him. Um, and, and, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, and, and, and it, it just saddens me that there aren't safety nets when it comes to these sports, wrestling, boxing, and, and to a great extent the NFL, for these players as they, and athletes as they get older. So that's my piece. I wish the best to uh, Steve Mongo McMichaels. And I think I'm going to put a link to his GoFundMe in my description box. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I'm, you know, when I get a chance, I'm going to try to donate to his GoFundMe too. Uh, because, um, you know, it's just terrible, you know, uh, that, that, that disease. You know, it's just... It's a terrible affliction, man. But tell me what you guys think.